the things about your story. <laughs> One of the things about your story is that it's directly linked to your purpose. Your purpose is basically your God-given assignment here on earth. And each time you wake up in the morning and you go back to bed, you realize that you're always fighting either to go with the resistance against your purpose or to die for your purpose. You have to make a choice. I remember one time when I was sharing my story publicly on KTN, KTN TV, and right after that, there was a random, there was a meeting at home, you know, with my family members, and they were asking me because I'd mentioned some very gross, sensitive matters that happened to my life. One of them being um, defilement as a child by my uncle when I was six years old, and another is just talking about my abortion and incest. And I was informed by, you know, one of my close family members that there was there was a planning of a meeting to have me explain to the family why I chose to publicly embarrass my family and the plan was for me to go back to to the national TV to to apologize and to tell Kenyans and people that watched from all over the world that I was sorry I lied about my family I lied about having been defiled I lied about incest and every single person you know who was part of that planning meeting tried to distance themselves from me and from the story it was so painful because often we think about people that resist us uh, being our friends and strangers and just people out there you never wake up to think that your family members could be one of your resistance and I brought back to the story of Joseph in the Bible who was his first resistance his family and it was worse when he came out publicly and said you know what guys I have a dream from God that you know one day I'm gonna be leading you guys I'm gonna be a king and you're gonna be worshiping me what did the family do they sold him off so one of the things realities you're going to have to face as you are as you are pursuing a uh, purpose is you're going to face resistance from your inner circle and you have to make a choice between pursuing your purpose or falling for the resistance for the sake of peace and so it was very painful and I remember having to called my mother up. I was at work when you know one of my cousins informed me of what was being planned at home. So I remember leaving work early and I, you know, with that anger and agitation and 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 just bitterness, rushing to my mother's place to just find out, is she part of that meeting so that I know I'm alone or is she with me? And so one of the most painful parts about my life is having to face my mother who I had never shared this story with before to just face her and having to break down from defilement as I was six all the way to incest when I was 19, 20 and just explain all that to yeah it was difficult for the first time in my life I saw my mother tear down I have never seen my mother my mother is a very strong person I have never seen tears on my mother's face except once when we had a funeral at home but that was that any other time no matter how tough a situation is I've never seen my mother tear. that was that broke me having to see my mother break down that broke me and so I asked her okay this is what a family is planning so I need to know are you with them or are you with me because clearly if they are planning to have me go back to the national TV and say and apologize to Kenyans and apologize to my family for embarrassing them. Nobody called me. I'm using my example to tell you the price you're going to pay for purpose. It is not a walk in the park. Nobody asked me, does your vagina work ever since you are defiled? Are you okay? Are you infected? Is there anything we can do as a family to support you? No. They were caring about their image and their, and their reputation. Go back to whatever national TV that was, apologize and say, you're sorry for embarrassing the family. And then we can see if we can take you back as a, our family member. Luckily, after having that conversation with my mother, I don't know what happened, but that meeting never took place and nobody ever raised it with me. And I'm grateful to God that, you know, he still gave me ability to love despite all that. I'm not saying this to shame. Like I said, I'm highlighting my personal example to let you know that your purpose is going to cost you. It's going to cost you your peace. It's going to cost you your family. It's going to cost you your friends because there will be friends who want to distance themselves from you navigating through this conversation. When you go back to bed, 
between having you know pleased people or pleased your soul what makes you sleep like a baby what makes you just have a good restful evening how do you feel as a person when each time you retire home you retire to your bed you are asking yourself questions what if i spoke my mind what if i said what i want what i really wanted to say what if i did what i really wanted to do i'm not doing what my friends want me to do i am not spending how my friends want me to spend i am not saying just the right things to please the crowd I am not presenting my image or my reputation as my family wants me to present, you know, my image or you know, present myself. I spoke my heart today. I presented myself as I want to present myself. I spoke my truth. I was authentic today. How does that make you feel? That is my biggest joy when I go back to bed and I retire feeling fulfilled. No matter how much resistance I faced that day, you know, no matter how many more haters I gathered that day, but I spoke my mind, I spoke my heart, and honey, or half of the time, actually most of the time, you're always speaking on behalf of people, people who don't have courage like you, people who don't have um, a clout like yours, people who don't have half the influence you have. When you speak your authentic story, when you speak your truth, you are speaking for these people. So when you go back home and you hold your voice and you hold your authenticity and you hold your truth because you are pleasing the crowd you are pleasing the masses you are you know you are presenting yourself how you should be presented or how you should present yourself you are limiting minority voices you are limiting help to someone in their closet you are limiting assistance to someone who's struggling somewhere privately somewhere in a corner it's a deliberate choice either to be a people pleaser or to be a purpose fulfiller one of the things i learned when i turned 30 is the significance of living your truth for 30 years i was living to impress people i was living to please the crowd i was speaking as the crowd wants me to speak i was presenting myself as the crowd wants me to present myself i was presenting myself as my family wanted me to present myself but then you turn 30 and you come this close to the end of your journey and you ask yourself have i served my journey have i served my purpose have i served people that god sent me to is it about accolades or is it about serving purpose is it about accolades or is it about discovering what you are meant to deliver to generations is it about accolades or is, is it about a name is it about love because, oh my God, you know, those guys love me so much. I don't want to disappoint them. My family, you know, believes in me. Is it about people believing in you or is it about you living your truth? No matter who is or who is not in your life. Like Joseph, his family sold him off. They didn't even distance themselves from him. They sold him. They did not want anything to do with him. Because for a moment, he was a disgrace. But eventually, what is Joseph's story? He became the king. And guess what? He was providing and serving his very family that sold him off. So just tarry, just stay patient, just stay put in due time. Everybody that distanced themselves from you will want to be part of your story because what? You endured, you lived your truth, you walked an authentic being before God and before man, you lived your true identity. There is no greater joy on the face of the earth as living your truth. My goodness, it feels like you cannot compare that satisfaction that gives you. When you walk, you have a sense of pride. You have a sense of esteem, knowing that God accepts me. God is impressed by me. God is pleased with me. He looks down and thinks, wow. Kweli nikona kadem. Nikona mtu. And it, I created someone who is sensible enough to fight everything with all they have to fulfill the greatest desire of heaven, which is assignment, which is purpose. There are people that will have to fall off your story. I'm telling you. There are people that will have to fall off your wagon because you will not do anything because you will not have done anything to them. But they can't pace up. Purpose distinguishes you from the shaft. Purpose takes you away from mediocrity. Purpose will definitely get you off the, the shore, the shallow end. It will bring you into the deep end where you look at your resistance face to face begin to say exactly what you want to say in a crowd of people you have a different opinion everybody is saying yes and you are the only one who wants to say no please say no you'd rather lose all these people and live your lonely truth 
rather than living a fun fallacy. When God is impressed with you, God is pleased with you, no matter who walks out of your life. Everything works together for good for those that walk in the path of purpose. Half the time when everybody is cheering you on all the time, you are on the wrong path. When you are doing the right thing, tell you what, a large amount of people will not like you. That's a price you're going to pay. You will never impress everyone at all times. So if you're going to live one more day, ask yourself, will I forever be a people's pleaser? Will I forever suffocate my voice? Will I forever hold my opinion just so that other people's opinion can thrive for the sake of peace? There's this statement we make, for the sake of peace. There are times when you don't have peace. If you're going to live your true self, there are times you will not have peace. And you have to embrace it with all grace. You don't have to be bitter about it. You don't want to be angry about it. Just be. Just be your true self. Whoever walks away is fine. But at the end of the day, when you go back to your bed, did you live your truth? Did you speak for your true self? Did you say exactly what you wanted to say? Are you happy? Are you living an authentic life? Are you happy? If your answer is yes, you are on the right path. Carry on. Thank you.